Okay. Hello. We are interviewing Judge Shadid, who's running for re-election as municipal court judge. Uh, we um, would love for you to start off and give us an introduction. You have two minutes. All right. My name is Damon Shadid. I am running for Seattle Municipal Court Judge, position seven. I'm currently running on a post, which uh, I'm very pleased about. Uh, but that's no excuse not to get out into the community and talk to people and see what everybody's thinking out there. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. And I'm also seeking the endorsement of the 36. And so I really thank you guys for meeting me and having gone through your process before. I know how detailed it is and how much care you guys put into it. And I, I really do appreciate that. I've been a municipal court judge now for eight years. It's the only court I've ever been a judge in, and it's the only court I will ever be a judge in. Uh, this is a court where I feel I can make the most difference. And during my time, my eight years as a municipal court judge, that is what I've tried to do. I've tried to find better ways of addressing the criminal legal system and the flaws in the criminal legal system so that we help more people and that we keep our community safer. I've done this in three specific programs that I'd like to talk to you about today. The first program that I started from the ground up is a brand new re-envisioned community court. Community court addresses the root causes of crime uh, and takes a services first approach to people. My community court is unique in that we have um, partnered with uh, the defense and the city to create a program in which people do not have to waive constitutional rights in order to gain services. This allows us to get to people right away. The day of booking, the day of charging, my community court can come in and help people immediately because we don't have to worry about things like discovery and other uh, barriers that typically have led people to not be able to get services quickly. The second program that I'm intimately involved with is I've reimagined and rebuilt our mental health court. Mental health Second. court is for people who are much more dangerous in our community, but also need much more help. And we know that a lot of people with severe mental health problems, even if they are dangerous, will get worse in jail. And so my mental health court tries to connect these people with services as well. And we have had a remarkable increase in the traffic through our mental health court since I've been a judge. And, that's uh, and finally, I've started the consolidated calendar. And the consolidated calendar is a calendar Sorry. that seeks to work that, directly. That is your time. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we're going to start with the prepared questions. Um, I'm going to uh, have Alice um, maybe start with the first prepared question. And a reminder, you have two minutes to answer these. Absolutely. Um, what are the elements of your background and experience that make you best qualified to earn our endorsement? You know, I have spent my entire career trying to work in the community, volunteering my time to try to get to know where I am, who I'm working with. And I think it's this community involvement that has really shaped my programs at Seattle Municipal Court. Um, I try to take an outside of the box approach to the criminal legal system. I don't believe that judges just call balls and strikes. Instead, I believe that judges need to use their considerable discretion to try to make people's lives better and try to make our community safer. And so these two elements, my work in the community as well as my work um, with uh, doing things differently than other people are used to doing them, I think makes me very well qualified uh, to earn your endorsement. Thank you. Um, question number two, um, put that in the chat. I'm curious, um, Sarah, do you want to answer that? Or yeah, sorry, not answer, ask that. Sure, I'm happy to. In what ways can the courts better serve those of moderate or low financial means in civil actions? Now, in Seattle Municipal Court, we only deal with uh, criminal law. We do not do civil uh, actions in the court. I'm happy to sort of give you so, my gut reaction on these, uh, but, uh, but we don't deal with it here in Seattle Municipal Court. The most yeah, important, go ahead. The most important thing um, to lower barriers is to, uh, finances should never be an issue with filing civil lawsuits. Uh, people should be able to access justice very easily. I also think that small claims courts and courts of limited jurisdiction, like the district court, uh, should be more accessible to working people. Uh, they need to, you know, most people who can afford a lawsuit can afford not to go to work for two weeks, 
that doesn't really work for most working people. And so we need to have more night courts. We need to have weekend courts. We need to have online courts, uh, things that regular people who can't take weeks off uh, work can actually access. So, so those are just a few ideas that I would have uh, if I worked in the civil arena. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next question, I'm wondering, Sherry, do you wanna take this one? Okay. Um, if, presiding, if presiding over a criminal docket, what role do you think judges should take? And would you take, if any, in diverting defendants to diversion programs such as drug court, mental health court, and other diversion programs or other alternatives to incarceration? Well, I mean, you just hit upon my uh, life's work. So thank you for that. Uh, it, it's incumbent, especially judges on my level. I'm dealing with criminal misdemeanor cases and the criminal misdemeanor shouldn't just be a pale reflection of the felony system. The criminal misdemeanor system should be about therapy. It should be about rehabilitation. It should be about getting people services. And I'd like you to imagine that if we had a fully functioning, fully fledged social net with uh, universal health care, universal child care, uh, you know, all of these social safety net programs that, that I believe the Democratic Party has been fighting for for many, many years, would a lot of these crimes happen? You know, if we put more education in our system, would it happen? If more people were able to work, would it happen? And my theory and my belief is no, it wouldn't. And so not only is it important for me to divert to these diversion programs, it's incumbent upon me to do so because this is the way we make our community better. And if I can do that through my court, I'm going to, and, and that's what my programs are all about. Great, thank you. Um, next question, uh, Stephanie, do you wanna take the next one? Absolutely. Um, what is your position on bail reform? What factors do you or would you consider when deciding whether to impose bail and what changes would you advocate for if any, if elected? So my, the major project I've done in bail reform is my community court program. So let me tell you how I've addressed bail reform in my community court program. In community court, if you agree to join the community court program, you get released, period. Uh, and community court is available to you regardless of what your criminal history is. And so this really helps bail reform because bail is normally set on people of color more often and bail is set on poor people more often they're, and they're kept in jail more often. So with community court, what we've done is we reform that system and saying, we're gonna get you the services you need so you won't reoffend instead of setting bail. Now the bail system needs to be reformed even more. Judges need a better toolbox in order to make sure that people can get back to court and aren't a danger to their community. And so just recently, I've started a new work group with the city attorney and the Department of Public Defense, and I'm calling it the Release Toolkit. And the purpose of the Release Toolkit is to give judges more tools to release more people in a safe and therapeutic way without running afoul of the law. It's about cutting down, cutting down barriers, breaking through silos, and trying to get us all working together for what's best for both the defendant and the community that we're releasing people into. So I'm very excited about this new program. Perfect, thank you. Um, we are going to move on to some e-board questions. These are not prepared questions. They're just questions from the e-board and reminder, you have a minute to answer these. Um, does anyone from the e-board have a question? Yeah, Consuelo? And then Stephanie. Sorry about that. I was talking with my mute on. <laughs> um, Judge Hadid, I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit more about your consolidated calendar and how that fits a social justice view. You bet. So the consolidated calendar um, takes people who are already working in the community with social workers who are in the community. And it gives one-stop shopping for all of those social workers with their clients who are involved in the criminal legal system to come to court on one day. The advantage of this is so the defendants will remember when to come to court. And so these caseworkers who are on the street are able to just come to court one time per week for half a day, instead of spreading out their court appearances all week and taking time away from when they could be on the street helping people. And so by consolidating all of these cases together, 
not only can I help this population more, but I also help the people who are working with the population. So, so that that's the idea behind a consolidated calendar. I'm trying to keep these under a minute. You're, you're doing a great job. Nice work. <laughs> uh, uh, Stephanie, you had a question. Yeah, it was more of a follow up. Um, I I was really interested in your statements about your release toolkit and the ways that you're trying to work across silos for service uh, provision. Um, I've I've seen in my personal life, you know, folks who've been released on bail and clearly needed services, and and nothing really kind of followed. Um, I'm curious if you could just say any more about that and how you what what kind of processes you're going through to try to connect with other um, service providers? So the, the people I'm reaching out to early on is Gel Health Services who can provide people with, uh, they can induct people on a Suboxone, which is a very effective uh, medication assisted therapy for heroin. Uh, they can also give people a supply of mental health medications for when they're released. I'm working with defense social workers who will be able to pick up the person from the jail and take them directly to a service provider that they're in need. I'm working with the city council to provide small um, to tiny house uh, shelter, a, 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 a dedicated amount of tiny houses where some of my uh, most high needs people will be able to go. Uh, these are the kinds of tools that I'm talking about is, you know, there's three legs of this of the stool. There, there's uh, caseworkers in the community, there's treatment, whether that be mental health or SUD, and there's housing. And you have to have those three Ten legs seconds. of the stool in order to be a I'm sorry, oh, sorry you have, you have 10 time? more seconds. You have to have the three legs of the stool to really make somebody stable in the community. And that's what I'm, that's what the release toolbox is all about. Very much appreciated. I know it's hard to try to cram everything into one minute. So I uh, appreciate that. Um, got time for a couple more questions. Uh, other folks. Yeah, Sarah. Um, so many of us know that there's a significant backlog of cases um, in trial court as a result of the pandemic. So what have you done personally to address that backlog in your courts? And what tools have you developed potentially to increase access to justice um, from perhaps some of those more innovative tools? But, well, community court is all about addressing a backlog because community court is able to address cases immediately and get people services immediately and get them out of our system immediately. And so if it wasn't for community court right now, our backlog would be so much worse than it already is because we are connecting people. I mean, before most cases will drag on for 60 days just to get the discovery done. The typical, typical community court case is over in 30 days, in and out, case is over. And so, so we're aggressively tackling the backlog. We're also just working overtime. We're adding calendars. We're doing everything we can in order to get more people in the door. We're trying to reach out to the city attorney's office to explain to them the limitations of the court as well and working with them to use their prosecutorial discretion on filing the That's right nice. cases early on. <laughs> that was, I, I keep thinking you're saying time, but you're saying 10 seconds. Um, the backlog is going to be something that plagues us for years, uh, but we're working very diligently to try to address it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, maybe we have time for one more question. If there are no more questions, I have, oh, Clayton, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm curious. Um, how um, how your negotiations with the city attorney's office are going? Um, I don't know if you guys were privy to a letter that the city attorney's office sent um, out complaining uh, that uh, they want to take people out of community court and I want to keep them in. It's been a rocky relationship. Uh, I'm trying to work through it. I, I don't think judges should be running to the media. Uh, I think we should be, I, I think what the city wants to see is us working together to try to resolve things. And so even though I didn't agree with the press release, I've worked very hard to get past it and to work with them. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue to do so uh, regardless of if our philosophies don't meld together uh, because they're an important player in the system and, and that needs to be respected. But I'm also not going to compromise my own uh, judicial philosophy in order to do it. Great, thank you. Um, we've got time for you to make a one minute closing statement if you would like. 
Well, I am seeking the endorsement of the 36. Uh, I don't expect to draw an opponent, but if I do, uh, I would very much appreciate the endorsement of organizations who I feel share my values. And the 36, I do feel share my values. I've been working hard. Uh, I, I've never taken the easy way out. I fight when I have to, I work when I have to, together with people, and I'll continue to do that. And I've made a lot of allies along the way, and I feel like we're making progress. Uh, the work is important, and this is where I belong, and I would appreciate your support in that. Well, thank you so much. Uh, great, ch great chatting with you. Thank you for uh, coming a little early. One